Well, hey there. Uh, as said a few days ago, uh, after receiving not only uh, my eight copies of Stevenson Wilds and uh, the uh, There Comes a Reckoning expansion for Doomtown, but also a review copy of uh, the Too Tough to Die uh, expansion, I decided to get back into constructing a new deck and uh, I thought I might do this live on camera and well, here we are. I don't know if this will be uh, especially exciting or interesting or stuff, but if there's one thing I learned throughout all of the years on the internet is uh, there's an audience for everything, so if you think this is going to be fun, uh, welcome! Okay, the general idea I had behind this deck is um, having a Stephen Wilds for every situation, uh, because yeah, with a cost of one and an upkeep of six, you're probably gonna play him and use him for one turn and then he's gone again, so why not put four of him in a deck and um, put him out whenever you need one. Uh, I've gotten some of the uh, promo copies of Stephen Wilds with different artwork, um, so I thought I'd take two of this one and two of this one to shake things up a bit. Okay, so this part is already decided upon. Now I just need to find an outfit that fits this style of play and these are all of the outfit cards I still have. All of the other ones I own have been uh, put into some decks I've already constructed. So yeah, um, not that much choice I guess. Well, pretty much uh, choice. But yeah, I don't have any Sloan Gang outfit cards left. Only one for Law Dogs, one for Fourth Ring. Two for Morgan Cattle Company, four for the 108 Righteous Bandits, and uh, three for the Spirit Wardens. Even though, uh, Eagle Wardens, sorry. Even though I just recently learned that all of the names have changed except for Law Dogs. Uh, these are the Fear Mongers now. Uh, these are the, I don't really know, forgot that one. Uh, Entrepreneurs, I don't know. These are the Anarchists, these are the First Peoples, and the Sloan Gang are the Outlaws. So, yeah, whatever. Um, I just looked across all of them and, well, the ability of the Full Moon Brotherhood would be kind of neat. Choose an opposing non-token dude that is adjacent to one of your dudes. That dude loses all traits, cannot move via card effects, and cannot refuse callouts. If that dude leaves play, either draw two cards or gain two ghost draw. Since I want to use uh, Stephen Wilds to stir up some trouble, it would be nice to have something like this. The thing is, uh, yeah, I'm kind of running low on hexes, so constructing a fourth ring deck is a bit problematic. Just as an exile is interesting, the upper part is nice uh, because, uh, yeah, whenever your opponent um, reveals an illegal hand, their bounty rises, so. This is good. Uh, the lower part, um, yeah, well, Stephen Wilds isn't a deputy. That's a problem. But wasn't there a card that can turn him into a deputy? Uh, we'll have to see. I guess I'm gonna take just this in X. Uh, the other idea was build another uh, First People stack. But yeah, while well, dudes are at a deed with a totem, they have plus one influence. Well, okay, Stephen Wilds isn't a shaman. Hmm. After refilling your hand during sundown, if you have equal or more influence in town square than each other player, draw a card. That's okay. But yeah, since I'm going to be pretty low on dudes, I just want to use Stephen Wilds and then not that many other dudes. This isn't going to happen probably that often. Uh, and boot your dude to boot an opposing dude with less influence at the same location. Yeah, well, I need dudes for that. In this one, choose a number of your spirits up to the number of holy grounds you control and boot them. You can use their abilities an additional time this turn. Uh, yeah, well, he's not a shaman, I said. Morgan's stables are kind of interesting. Uh, you reduce the cost of your first horse each turn by one ghost rock, which would be neat because. Since uh, I'm gonna discard and uh, replay Stephen Wise all the time, his horse is always gonna disappear. So, if I want to go for horses, I could probably save a lot of money. Mm, but the other part, after you complete a Nuno shootout ability that moved one of your dudes, draw a card and discard a card, make another play, 
or pass if you're not in a shootout that play cannot be acting uh, yeah and I would have to go for well horses I guess I'm kind of kind of unsure what to do uh, so before doing that let's do the obvious uh, I want uh, where's that stuff uh, I don't want good old Stephen Wilds to die a lot because if he dies uh, I've got three dead cards in my deck so the first thing I need is the Campbell and Hedge Billiard Parlor uh, I can boot that after posses are formed in a shootout and for the rem remainder of the shootout hand ranks cannot be modified um, except for by cheating resolution abilities which is nice because Stephen Wilds doesn't have an ability that can uh, Modify hand ranks. And uh, dudes cannot be discarded or aced by shootout or non cheating resolution abilities during the first round, which is uh, pretty good because, yeah, I don't want to lose Steven to a legendary holster or shotgun, even though, yeah, well, uh, a shotgun isn't that uh, dangerous to him. But yeah, that could stop him from getting sent home booted or stuff. Oh well, he could still get sent home booted, but that isn't as bad. Uh, okay, and because we take the camper and hatch billiard parlor, well, we want to have it reliably in play. So, um, yeah, I need. Where is that guy? Uh, Old Howard! Yeah, I should have looked up his value beforehand because I've got all of my cards uh, sorted for their value. This will just take a moment. Here he is. A four of spades. Uh, Old Howard. A grifter. Um, you get him into play um, at the beginning of the game. And then you can search your deck for a deed play it, attach Old Howard to that deed, it loses all of its production and its uh, uh, control points and yeah well, then you've got its ability. Okay, so those two things at the beginning of the game, that costs six, that's pretty expensive. Um, but what can you do? The idea was if I took Law Dogs um, Abram Growth has the ability to. Where are the law dogs? Here are the law dogs. Uh, has the ability to start a job in order to get rid of an abomination. And even though Old Howard loses its, loses, uh, its classification as a dude, um, he becomes a condition once you've done that, he still remains an abomination. So, um, yeah. Abram Growth could get rid of him. Do I have Abram Growths left? Would be a bit stupid if I didn't have a single Abram Growth. Ah, yeah, there's one. So, yeah, I would have to. Ah, never mind. It only works on Holy Ground Teeds. Ah, that's not a Holy Ground Teed. Okay, uh, plan failed. <laughs> Can I turn it into a holy ground deed? I'm not sure. Okay, um, what am I gonna do then? Well, I could use the Full Moon Brotherhood because Old Heart is an abomination and that would uh, reduce the cost of playing an experienced Ivor Holly. Um, well, yeah, do I want another? Fourth ring deck. I guess it's gonna be another fourth ring deck. Okay. Okay. So, full moon brotherhood. Old Howard is gonna be one of my starting posse. I need to save up four money in order to get uh, the Campbell and Hatch billiard parlor. And these aren't going to be in my starting posse. Second idea I had, 
Um, here's the servitors. They were introduced in There Comes a Reckoning, and I could take one of those. Yeah, they're they are servitors, but they are actually legends. You can put one of the legends into your deck, and he doesn't go into your deck. He just attaches to your home, and you've got another ability. And, well, that one would decrease my production by two. Uh, not my production, my starting uh, Ghost Rock. So I would only have 17, but Trespass Stone has a Pretty neat ability. Uh, he has a drawback, uh, except at home, only your shooter contributes to your draw hand bonuses. Since I pretty much only want to use Steven Wiles to go out and uh, fight on his own, that doesn't really matter because, yeah, Steven Wiles uh, has three bullets and that's great. And I could uh, boot uh, Jasper Stone in reaction after posses are formed uh, to choose a dude in the opposing posse. And as long as that guy stays in the opposing posse, Steven Wise would get another plus two bullets. And um, yeah, he would get a permanent control point and a permanent plus one bullets afterwards, which is, uh, yeah, it's kind of a waste because I'm not gonna pay him for more than a turn or so. I don't know yet if I want to put Jasper Stone in this. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty pricey already, so uh, putting even more on it. I'll put him here for a moment. We'll see about that. Okay. Uh, Stunning dudes. I've got 11 to 13 Ghost Rock. I want dudes with a lot of influence that don't cost much. Uh, Dwarf Zog would be a good idea. Um, but he has an upkeep of one. On the other hand, I also want a Huckster. Valeria Batten doesn't have upkeep, is a pretty bad Huckster, but can also invent mystical gadgets. Um, Black Owl? That's a new guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, wait a second. I wanted to predominantly use guys from the Too Tough to Die expansion, so let's just start with those. So, where did I put the... Um, okay, here's the four dudes from the Two Tough to Die expansion. Four, uh, fourth ring, fear mongers, whatever they are. Okay, Papa Marias, uh, Huckster Zero, can move other Hucksters to his location. Costs only three. That's pretty good. The Skinwalker is nice, but perhaps a bit too expensive. Tonton Makut, uh, I guess that's how you pronounce his name. Yeah, nah. too, too expensive uh, in upkeep. And then we've got the experienced Kevin Wainwright, who's pretty good, but yeah, also too expensive. Uh, Papa Marius could be, could be one I could use. Well, that didn't take long. Okay, we've got Valeria Batten, Zug, Black Owl, Papa Mar Marias. Let's see, who else could we use? Um, Christine Perfect. No influence. That's not good. Uh, where were we? Absalom Hotchkiss. Um, yeah, one influence. Uh, maybe. The Brute. Nope. Slate Liebody. He's pretty good, but he's also pretty expensive. Quimby R. Uh, Tuttlemeyer. Nah, too expensive. Carl Odet, no influence. The Harvester. Counts as three dudes in a starting posse. He is. He is pretty good, I have to admit that. But he's expensive. Uh, I, I, I don't think I want one dude who's that expensive. I want multiple dudes so I can kind of spread out or oh, let's say so I'm, I'm not that uh, easy to attack via something like kidnapping or stuff like that. Arnold McCaddish is always a pretty good hmm. yeah he's, he's an okay dude um, bit pricey 
His ability doesn't help that much. Uh, would help if uh, it would work if Steven Weiss would be aced, but yeah. The Flying Pops Echoes. Um, maybe. All of these dudes are so expensive. Where's, where's the... You know, Rosenbaum's Golem. Uh, choose an opposing dude. Boot that dude and you may give them plus five value. That dude's grid is 11 or higher. You may unboot one of your other dudes. Uh, nah. He doesn't have any uh, influence. The Tattooed Man. Doesn't that look like Slenderman? Richard Slaven. Too expensive. Avi Klein. Too expensive in upkeep. Kevin Wainwright. Nope. Smiling Tom, nope. Germain, nope. Germain experienced, double nope. Ever Holly, nope. Although I should put an Ever Holly in there. Uh, not in my starting posse, but. Yeah. Okay, we've got those. Let's have a look at the drifters. Um, there's this uh, doctor, Dr. Brian Foxworth, I guess. I could really use him. Johnny Brocklehurst, brother to Androx Brocklehurst, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Nah, it's, he has a stupid name and a stupid beard and it's also too expensive. Olivia Jenks, pretty good. Uh, Gina Tailfeathers, no, I've only got space for one grifter. Theo Waitley Boyer, mm -hmm. he's a huckster. Hucksters are good. Um, but yeah, not good enough. Steel Archer, I like him, he's good, but nah, too expensive. John Aces Radcliffe, nope. Uh, Shaman, don't need those. Mahogany Jackson, can do Kung Fu, nope. Travis Moon, <laughs> he always dies first. Uh, experienced Steel Archer, Winner May, nope. Wilbur Crowley, he's a huckster, maybe, but a bit too. Expensive. Uh, experience Travis Moon, Roderick Byer, nope. Nope. Uh, I can't put any more eights in there. Nope. Nope. Do I have all of the Brian Foxworths uh, already built into something? That would be bad because I need one. Max Payne, nope. Angela Payne, Doris Powell, uh, she has too much upkeep. Denise Bronsini, El Grajo, whatever he might be based upon. Nicodemus Whiteley, yeah, pretty good, but uh, expensive as hell. J.W. Byrne, gets good once he has stuff. Road again, Jacqueline Isham, I seem to have uh, yeah, put Brian Foxworth into everything. Oh, is he a modern cattle company dude? I'm not too sure at the moment. Okay, let's look at these. Um, uh, the harvester, nah, he's, he's too, he's too expensive. Olivia Jenks, yep. Papa Marias, yep. That's six, and what did I say? How much do I have? Um, 11 to 13. I want another Huckster. Uh, hmm. Yeah, they get battled with more hexes, so I guess the Flying Pops are Popescu's. 3, 6, 10, 16, 18. That would leave me with one Ghost Rock in the beginning of the game. That's not much, but we've got a production of three and only upkeep of one. Okay, it could work. Maybe I don't use Jasper Stone. We'll see. Okay. Now that that's uh, done. Okay, so we've got a starting posse of four dudes. We've got Campbell and Hatchbillard Parlor, which is kind of part of our starting posse. And we've got four Stephen Wises. What else? Okay, uh, we've decided to use the fourth ring and get some hucksters. So 
I guess we should put some hexes in there. Two new, two new hexes uh, available in this set. Gateway, move your abomination at this location to another location, uh, or your abomination joins your posse moving if necessary. Uh, it's an eight. I want eights because I'm gonna draw a lot of Stephen Wilds in uh, shootouts. Maybe. Bedazzle, cheat and resolution, lower players hand rank by two, if this is a shootout given opposing due to bullet penalty equal to their current bullets that last the remainder of the shootout. This is pretty good because it's also incredibly easy. But do I want to get my hucksters into shootouts? Ah oh well, we'll take one of those. Okay, where's the other hexes? moment they are a ah, good thing I've got some new soul blasts okay here's the rest of my hexes and uh, we've got soul blast always fun faster in grasp uh, melee hex you make not cast a spell of the yeah that's the uh, usual melee weapons Reduce an opposing dude's value by 6. If this would reduce their value below 1, ace them. Uh, I need high cards in my deck to use something like that. Mirror, mirror! Your success bullet type becomes that of an opposing dude. If the success has a low bullet rating, they get a bullet bonus equal to the difference in ratings. Or the opposite. Yeah, well, okay. All of these are shootout hexes. Huh? Reduce your opponent's casualties by three this round. If you win this round, ace the opposing shooter. This acing effect cannot be prevented. Okay, Nightmare Realm. Choose an opposing dude. That dude cannot leave the shootout this round. Each round before shooters are declared, give that dude minus one bullets and minus one value. Give your dude plus one bullets. Okay. Use after all players anti for low ball. If this dude is in the town square, if successful, move one ghost rock from the pot into your stash and increase this dude's bounty by one. Ah, not too sure about that. Puppet. Puppet is always nice. I guess we're gonna use puppet. This was, yeah. Phantom Fingers. Choose a goods card attached to an opposing dude. Uh, this on adjacent location. Boot it and it loses all traits. Abilities and bullet bonuses. Yeah, yeah, um, because it can be used uh, on dudes in adjacent locations, which is always nice. Mark of Pestilence. Nah. Phantasm. Choose another place on booted dude at this or adjacent location. Move them to a location adjacent to where they are now without booting. Oh, Phantasm. Phantasm is a lot of fun. <laughs> Use that to great effect once. Uh, look at one or two random cards in an opponent's hand. You may ace this card to ace a non-unique card you looked at. Yeah, uh, why not? Um, it's it's uh, a king, so it's of high value. And I guess we're gonna take a paral paralysis mark because uh, yeah, we've uh, we've got. Uh, Eights. That came out wrong. We've we've got four eight value cards in the form of Stephen Wilde, so we need more eight cards in this deck. So I guess I'm gonna use a gateway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And uh, let's put a soul blast in there because soul blasts are always fun. And yeah, nightmare. Run. Okay. I guess that does it for uh, Hexus. Now, I just need to clean up this mess for a moment. Um, okay. How many Hexus did we have again? Two, I think, didn't we? Flying Popsekus and Papa Mar Marius. Uh, so we need some backup Hexus. Um, we want, we want, where did I put this now? Where, where are the uh, fourth ring dudes? Ah, there. Uh, you don't want to see what's over here. Well, I can show you for a moment. Uh, there's a, a lot of stuff lying around. 
And uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, back to our main attraction. Um, we want Agaholi, of course, because um, yeah, he's great. Um, Agaholi experienced one. Yeah. Uh, uh, for some reason, I've got two different versions of him. There was a corrected promo card, I think. But I have no idea which one it was. This one has got a little asterisk, so that, that's probably it. Um, okay. Other backup Huckster dudes. Um, yeah, Driftzug perhaps isn't the worst idea for a backup. I want those with high values, I guess, because... Uh, because we're gonna draw them at some point and... Uh, so let's just put Germain in there and... Why not experience Germain while we're at it? The tattooed man. Uh, nah. Mika Rice. Yeah, it's okay. That's a mad scientist. That guy's just transient. Leon Cavallo. I guess I'm gonna be a bit uh, creative. Not creative, but uh, I guess I'm gonna put Nicodemus Waitley in there. I doubt that I'm ever gonna be able to play him, but it would be kind of fun. Do we have another Drifter Huckster with a high value? Not really. Dr. Don Edwards is a mad scientist. No. One, two, three, four, five. Ha! Who else? Can't put value uh, eight dudes in there. The gray man is an abomination. I need more abominations, I just noticed. Because, um,. Yeah, abominations, huh? So I guess I'm gonna put a gray man in there. And, uh, oh yeah, completely forgot about these ones. Um, yeah, Skinwalker. He looks cool. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the Steven Wilders. That should be enough dudes, I guess. Okay, how many cards do we have in total? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. That's almost half a deck. We need more um, deeds because I've put some pretty expensive stuff in there and now I need something to well pay for it I guess uh, where are the deeds nope are they over here no these are the hexes here no where did I put the deeds again huh Um, this is gonna be great on video. They're not here. Yeah, they're here. Oh, okay, I've got them. Okay, here's the uh, Too Tough to Die deeds, and they are 
good, but they are nah, they have such low values. I guess I'm gonna take the Clanton Ranch because uh, it's it's pretty. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, Concordia Cemetery, a core card for uh, Fourth Ring. Didn't think about this because I wasn't planning on building another Fourth Ring deck. Um, costs only one Ghost Rock. So I guess I'm gonna skip Jasper Stone. Uh, this is gonna be expensive otherwise. Uh, one Ghost Rock. I would start without any Ghost Rock. It uh, would be kind of stupid. And before a non-token dude opposing you do this ace and shootout, give this deed a permanent plus one production. Since I want to go out with uh, Mr. Wilds and kill dudes left and right, I guess uh, I could use the money from all those killings. Oh yeah, right. Wasn't there a... Wasn't there a hex that let me bring that dudes back? I guess there was, but I must have uh, I must have put all of them into different decks. This is going great. Um, okay, yeah, Concordia Cemetery, Clanton Ranch. For the stuff, uh, what's what's the name? This this isn't the right pile. This is the right pile. So, uh, X plays. It's pretty inexpensive and gets quite a bit of uh, production. Yeah, let's just put it in there. Five Aces Gambling Hall is a core card for Sloan Gang. On I don't know what to make of the Old Washoe Club. It's strange. Okay. Other deeds. I want some deeds with high values. So I'm just gonna, I, I'm not even gonna look at half of these because I'm gonna start at uh, value 10, I guess. The Oriental Saloon. Um, determine control of this deed using bullets instead of influence. They've got a keyword for that now. It's uh, rowdy, I guess. After you reveal a cheat in hand, unboot your dude in town and give that dude two bounty. That could be pretty good. Uh, but I don't want to cheat that much. No. Let's start at the back. After you collect production during upkeep, choose a deed you control but do not own. Gain ghost, car, ghost rock equal to its production. Well, you get production first and then have to pay upkeep, right? So at this point, Stephen Wise may very well still be there. Sounds good. High stakes haven. Whenever you con the controller reveals an illegal draw hand, that player either pays one ghost rock or discards a random hand. I'm not gonna cheat that much anyway. Well, I guess I'm gonna cheat like, like mad, but I don't plan on doing so. Um, the Whitley Estate can bring aced spells and stuff back. Nah. Cliff's number four saloon. You do it at this location or an adjacent location you can roll becomes a start. Uh, Stephen Wise is already a start. Grimoires and more. After your Huckster enters play, pull. If the pull is a club, send that dude home booted. Otherwise, attach a hex from your discard pile to that dude, paying all costs. Nah, I don't plan on playing that many Hucksters, only if I have to. Silent Sigil, the number of cards you can discard at sundown is reduced by one after you fill your hand during sundown draw a card. Yeah, that's good. Testing range. Nope. Hellstrom plant number nine. Uh, is that an allusion to number nine out of, out of space? I don't know. Choose a dude you own and control. Unboot a horse or gadget attached to that dude. You can use one of the abilities on that horse or gadget another time this turn. Don't have gadgets now. The Undertaker! Two Ghost Rock each time an in play dude is aced. That's uh, sounds good. 
Gamora Jail. Nah. Walters Creek Distillery. Boot a saloon or casino that you own or control on this street. If you booted a casino, gain two ghost drug. If you booted a saloon, you may discard a card to draw a card. Uh, how many saloons and... Wait a second, that... Uh, that thing I have is a casino, but I don't want to boot it for other stuff. Nah. Nah. Not good enough. Carter's Bounties. Move your dude into your posse from any location. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wait a second. This. That's good. Okay. Um, so, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, eight, nine deeds. Yeah, that should be enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, plus five, twenty-nine, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-nine, fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four, fifty-five, fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty-nine, seventy-nine, seventy-eight, seventy-nine, eighty-nine, ninety-nine, 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 
Okay, dogs, duster. Nope. Nunchucks! Uh, mini weapons, I don't know. The Bowie knife, huh. Nah. Peacemaker cannot be changed to a draw and cannot have their bullets lowered by another player's shootout ability. Yeah, well, okay. It's uh, it's a two, but uh, what can you do? And a pair of six shooters. Well, that's uh, that's a wide range of different values, I guess. Okay, I've added nine cards, so I guess there's enough room for ten more cards. Nineteen twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, twenty, twenty ten, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, plus five is forty two. So, yeah, ten more cards. Okay, let's look at actions and uh, Look at high value actions, I guess. Oh, that's a huge pile of cards. So, yeah, here's all of the actions I haven't used in decks yet. Plus, here's the actions from uh, Too Tough to Die. Um, there was one I really wanted to use from that one, and it was Hostile Takeover. Boot your stud at a deed you control but do not own. Boot that deed to gain Ghost Rock equal to your stud's bullets to a maximum of three. You may ace this card to give that deed a permanent plus one control point and that deed a permanent plus one influence. Let's put it in there three times. Okay, the rest of this stuff. Uh, I mean, Huck Huckleberry sounded interesting. Your opponent chooses a dude in their posse. That dude joins your posse under your control for the remainder of the shootout. Cheat and resolution. So yeah, let's let's hope that my opponents will cheat like mad. And another cheat and resolution. I've got enough cheat and resolution stuff. I need something that gives me money. The winning agenda. Choose your dude and discard cards equal to their influence to a maximum of three. Draw cards equal to their influence to a maximum of three. Maybe, but it costs money. Ah, oh, well, let's put it in there once. A secret tunnel. Move your dude from one in-town deed you own to another in-town deed you own without booting. Make another noon play. Nah. Choose your dude and an opposing dude at the same location. Is this supposed to be Ivor Hawley? Sounds strange. Uh, sounds. Looks. Looks really strange. Nah. Deliberate infection. Nah. Forced quarantine. Uh, I, I want. I want something that gives money. Move your dude to a deed that you own but do not control. This is good. Ace a dude you own and control to gain ghost drop equal to their cost. Ace a dude you own and control to reduce your casualties. This round to zero. Choose a dude who gets plus two bullets and becomes a stud for the remainder of the shootout. Your dudes cannot feed this round. I usually don't want to kill my dudes, but, well, why not? Um, lowering hand ranks. Uh, market location. Dudes at that location can join the defending posse without permission from the mark. That doesn't really make any sense. This is only useful in in multiplayer games, I guess. Uh, well, it, it has more stuff, but uh, you know what I mean. Lost to the plague. That's nasty. I want... Uh, nah, that's for... for uh, how do you call them? Mad scientists! If your posse has a higher total bullet rating than the opposing posse, boot your shooter to increase your hand rank by two. That might not... probably not happen all that often. Boot or discard your stud dude. If that dude was a deputy, send the opposing shooter home booted. Send all dudes in your posse home booted. Nah. 
Something with melee weapons. Where's, where's stuff that gives money? Um, someone else's problem. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna use that many jobs. Put this card whenever you reveal an illegal draw hand. While this card is unbooted, increase your shootout hand rank by one. If not, decrease it by one. That costs upkeep. That's it's a good card, but it's, yeah. Moving forward sounds nice. Getting um, in town deeds for less money as a cheating resolution. There's unprepared. Yeah. You can always use unprepared, right? Fresh horses! I don't think that I've put a single horse in that deck. Uh, prayer, backroom deals. Yeah, could save some money. And let's see, I had room for ten more cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Exactly ten. Okay, that should be 52 cards now. I have no idea how well this deck will work, how well I will draw with it. Uh, let's just find out. Um, these are five. These five are gonna be in play at the beginning of the game. And this one's gonna be two, because I'm gonna use uh, Old Howard to get it to the table. So um, these are six cards. These should be 46. Let's find out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, 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 forty-n
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Come on. Uh, well, three pairs. <laughs> With two Steven Wilders in there. Ha. Okay. Now, here comes what I usually do when something like that happens. Wait a second! I made a mistake! The flying Popsecus, Popescus are uh, value 8. I can't use them. Well, that sucks. Um, what was the other guy I could have used instead of them? Valeria Batten? I guess Valeria Batten. <clears throat> but she can invent mystical gadgets. Nah. Let's just use Duftzug. Problem solved. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that was something that I also wanted to check whether I've made a mistake um, by calculating the numbers of cards that I'm allowed to use. Um, let's put those over here for a second. Queen seven. Mm. <laughs> oh, the queens again. Yeah. So let's find out if I can just scrap some numbers all together. If I get a value only a single time in the deck, I probably. Oh yeah, I put a Dwarf Zook in there uh, that I wanted as backup, but now I've got him in my starting posse, so I don't need him there. So uh, yeah, I uh, gotta keep that in mind. We are down to 51 cards for a moment. And uh, that might change things a bit. I don't know. Let's see? Seven, eight, eight, nine, five. Okay, aces. We've got two aces. That's not much. Twos. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Five twos. And plus this one, but I don't think that Olivia Jenks is gonna show up in the drawing pile that often. That's okay too. <clears throat> no threes. One, two, three. Three fours. One five, one six. Uh, I should probably get rid of those two. <clears throat> one, two, three, four. Four sevens. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six eights. One, two, three, four. Four nines. Three tens. Two jacks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight queens. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Six kings. More. What do I need more? More jacks? Okay, I'm gonna get rid of. I'm your Huckleberry and Phantom Fingers because single fives and sixes aren't really doing much good. Especially not since I can't get a straight flush with them. Okay, we've got room for three more cards. What could we put in there? Well, I haven't looked at all of the action cards yet, so maybe just some of those. Um, uh, Nah, you had one job! <clears throat> right of profane abstersion. Something with spells could help. Uh, this is heard in the morning. Run them down, written down. Hmm. 
Grim Servant of Death. Um, could be useful. Let's just put one of those in there. Uh, it means I can choose a dude who is not in the shootout, who is at home, and who is controlled by the marker of the player opposing a job. He can join the posse. If he doesn't, um, one of the dudes in the posse becomes a stud and gets plus two bullets, and uh, the opponent takes two extra casualties. If their draw hand is ever cheating this round. That's... That's interesting. I mean, with what I've got, I've always... I will always have a... Let's put it in there twice. I'll always have a, a guy at home who won't do anything. That leads me to the problem of I need more friggin' money. So we've got room for one more. One good turn. Oh, no. I've just gotten rid of all my sixes. Okay, let's let's just put another um, what are they called? Another deed in there. Something something that's cheap and gets a lot of production. Old March's Manor. The controller can use Ghost Rock on this deed to pay for action cards or gadget abilities during shootouts. Before making a play, move all Ghost Rock counters from a card you control to this deed. Place one ghost rock on this deed. Sounds good. I mean, action cards during shootouts. I'm not exactly sure how many of those I've got that require money, but the Grim Servant of Death needs money, so yeah. Why not? Okay, we're back up to 52 cards. And uh, let's say I've got Stephen Wiles, and Stephen Wiles has what's my uh, most, uh, my cheapest weapon. Uh, that's not the cheapest one. Let's say he has the Peacemaker. So he has four bullets and isn't in the deck at this moment. Let's see what he can do. All of this could work very well. Probably won't, but it could. Getting good vibes here. So, nine cards. You have one job, Stephen Wiles. And show me what you got. There's a pair. There's a another pair. And it's two pairs again. Come on. You can do better than that. Probably should have, uh, yeah, taken cards I need out of decks I've already constructed for this one, like Dr. Brian Foxworth, for example. Because yeah, um, I don't think that I've put anything in there that will help me save Stephen Wilde from dying. Except for that one card. So if one of those goes down, that's it. Ah, but that won't happen. Why should that happen? Two queens, two sevens, two eights, two kings. That's, uh, yeah, that's two of a kind once again. Huh. Another card would have turned it into a cheated full house. 
and another card into a cheated four of a kind or an uncheated full house. So yeah, I just need to find a way to increase Stephen White's bullets even more or uh, perhaps just, I don't know, draw better. Well, I guess we'll leave it at that. So yeah, um, I've got a new deck. The Full Moon Brotherhood centered around Stephen Wilde's um, coming out all of the time and wrecking my opponent's stuff. And I hope it will be good. I'll report back once I have the opportunity to play it. Thanks for watching! If you watched all of this, uh, I have no idea how long this took. An hour? I don't know. Uh, yeah, see you next time.